hundred years ago, Napoleon said, an army marches on its stomach. He was doing no more than echo Frederick the Great, who told his generals, an army, like a serpent, travels on its belly. Those words are as true today as they were then. If men are to fight well, they must be fed well. This picture is devoted to improving the soldier's food. It contains nothing that cannot be carried out by any unit, provided that the commanding officer and the messing officer really want it. Discipline is just as important in the cookhouse as on the parade ground. No officer would allow slack discipline on parade. No officer should allow slackness in the cookhouse. Oh, God, blimey, look at this. I see his arms are... You know, if things don't get better here, I'm going to join the ruddy navy. All the other side. Any complaints? Yes, sir. Well, McPherson, what is it? Uh, these potatoes, sir, they're not so good. They seem quite normal to me. Oh, but they have a very unpleasant appearance when they're cut open, sir. Yes. Right, I'll see about that. All right, carry on. There you are. What I'll tell you. <laughs> who told who? Sir. Ah, sir. Ah, can anyone tell me who keeps these inkwells full? Sir. sir. Let's take a walk around now, shall we? Let's start with the ballot rooms. Yes, sir. This way, aren't they? the adjutant's boyfriend, Jock? Now, don't be blasphemous, Walter. That's the new colonel. Is it? <laughs> Got a nice kind face, eh? Appearances are often deceptive. Go call that officer back. Brooks! Sir, how do you do, Brooks? I'm the new commanding officer. Brooks is the orderly officer today, sir. Ah, done your dinners yet? Yes, sir. No complaints? One complaint, sir. Oh, what was that? Bad potato, sir. I was going to see the messing officer about it. You carry on, Brooks. I'll take it up with him myself. Right, sir. Very good. He'll be a messing committee now, sir. Ah. We'll take last week's bill of fare. I'll just pass it round. All right, carry on. Mr. Martin, sir, messing officer. How do you do? What's, what's this? Messing committee? Yes, sir. Hmm. We've got a spare agenda. Uh, no, sir, we don't usually worry about agendas. Oh. Well, no mind. Carry on now. I'll watch for a bit. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, last week's bill of fare. 
Any complaints? No, sir. No, sir. Very well. Next week's bill of fare. Any suggestions or complaints? No, sir. No, sir. Any other business? No, sir. Well, leave to dismiss, sir, please. Yes, yes. Right. All out. Martin, may I see that bill of fare? Now, this is this week, sir. Oh. And this is next week's. Look the same, aren't they? We'll have to have a talk about messing, Martin. Yes, all right. Very good. Yes. All right, Martin, sit down, will you? Yes, sir. Yes, on Thursday, then. Uh, how, how long have you been messing, officer? Six weeks, sir. I took over when Parker was transferred. Oh. You like the job? Well, no, sir. As a matter of fact, I was going to ask you whether I could possibly get a shift to something else. What's the matter with it? Well, sir, I, I didn't join the army to run a cook shop. I joined to fight. Now, just a moment. Surely you realize a soldier can't fight properly unless he's fed properly. Bad messing's bound to lead to bad discipline. And you know what that means. Well, surely it's not as serious as all that, sir. Now, look here. If the men don't get good food, or enough food, or the sort of food they want, what do they do? I don't know, sir. Buy things, I suppose. Exactly. They spend all their money buying food. When it comes to payday, they're broke. If they want a packet of cigarettes, they borrow or sell kit to get it. Before you know where you are, you've got gambling and stealing on your hands. All because of bad messing. I never looked at it that way, sir. Now listen, Martin. I want the messing in my battalion to be as good as it possibly can. And that means the messing officer's got to be right on the top of his job. Do you want to tackle it? Yes, sir. I do. Good. Well, let's get down to it. I hear there was a complaint about the potatoes at dinner today. Uh, yes, sir. I've had a look at some of them since. They seem to be sort of discoloured inside. Discoloured, eh? That's probably bad storage. Were they in good condition when they arrived? Oh, I, I, I think so, sir. Hmm. Well, I suggest you have a look at your vegetable store. The proper storage of vegetables is an important factor in good messing. If they're left about in heaps on a damp floor or in old sacks piled against a damp wall, they'll quickly become rotten. Duck boards are provided for use, not ornament. They should be on the floor under the vegetables and not standing against the wall. Thousands of pounds worth of good food is wasted every year because of inefficient storage arrangements. Now this is how a properly conducted vegetable store should look when the cook arrives to draw the day's rations. The duck boards have been put in place and these vegetables are kept clear of the floor, well away from one another and well away from the wall. This keeps them dry and allows the air to circulate freely around them. Here's the cook come to collect the beetroot for today's dinner. Notice how he leaves the sack as he found it, well away from the wall. That cabbage is in perfect condition and there'll be no waste when it comes to be cooked. Good food storage cuts out waste and enables every scrap of food to be used. Dry goods, particularly flour, sugar and oats, should be kept off the ground too. Never let them touch the walls and always see that the cooks use up the oldest stocks first, placing the new ones underneath or behind those which are already there. Bread should never be piled like this against a wall which may be damp or where the air can't get at it. The right way to stack loaves is like this, clear of the wall and with plenty of space between them. What about this missing committee of yours? Well, to be perfectly frank, sir, it seems rather a waste of time. But then I suppose it's only a formality, really, isn't it? Well, the way you were running it this morning, yes, but it oughtn't to be. You got the minutes with you? Minutes? No, sir, I'm afraid we don't keep any. You better start keeping them right away, because you're going to need them when you get your new committee. New committee? Good Lord, man, yes. Don't you realize your committee isn't representative of the men at all? A missing committee ought to consist of one private soldier from every company. Have the sergeant cook in, by all means, for technical details and so on. And we leave the NCOs out of it. It's the private soldier that knows what the men really want. Oh, 
Ahoj. The Mint Private Feature Messenger Committee. Oh, God, blimey, so they have. I'm it, boys. Yeah, and old Rosebottom's in, too. Yeah, lad, we'll show him. Thank God it wasn't McPherson. He'd go giving us haggis for breakfast. <laughs> <Would you? laughs> All right. You leave it to me. You'll have oysters and caviar for breakfast. Ah, wristles to you. But wristles apart. Now, you chaps have got an opportunity to do something about the grub room here. You wait till I get in front of that messing committee tomorrow. I'll tell them a thing or two. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah. to be in the storeroom. Because there are no proper ceiling rails, these quarters of beef are allowed to hang touching the wall and touching one another, and the wrappers have been left on. The untrained butcher made things worse by cutting up beef that was still frozen hard. That beef shouldn't have been butchered for at least another 48 hours. It must be thawed out before it's cooked, and it ought to be thawed out before it's even jointed. This is what happens if a quarter of beef is hacked about just look at this waste, and that quite apart from the goodness that's lost in the water that comes away from the outer surface when it thaws. Now here's the battalion's new meat store, and this is what a meat store should look like. The quarters of beef are properly hung, well away from one another and well away from the wall, and the wrappers have been taken off before hanging. Walls are kept clean, and there's plenty of ventilation. And there aren't going to be any flies in this meat store. The windows are covered with fine wire gauze. And there's a fly paper ready to deal with any stray parachutists. Now take a look at the outside of the building and you'll find that it's well sheltered from the sun. Inside, the temperature is kept at a steady 60 degrees. Higher than that would thaw the meat too quickly, and as a result it would eat like leather. Not every battalion can hope to have a meat store as perfect as this, but even when men are under canvas, meat can still be properly stored. The best way is to dig a pit and hang the meat in it, with boards and wet sacking over the top to keep out the sun. Now let's see how a trained butcher handles this quarter of beef after it's had its 48 hours to thaw out. First, he cuts off the prime roasting joints, the rump, sirloin and wing rib, from the round and shank. Notice that he's using a saw, not a cleaver. Now he takes off the thin flank. This is only good for stewing. Not every joint is good for roasting. Those with too much sinew or too little fat are better stewed. Now for the kidney knob. 
This mass of fat contains the kidney. The fat around it is first class suet and it should be chopped up for use in puddings, not melted down for dripping. Then the butcher takes off the rump, leaving the loin and wing rib. These are the prime roasting joints. They can also be used for fried steaks. It's sheer waste to cut them up for stewing, mincing, pies or pudding. And here is the short fillet. This too is best used for roasting or frying. A bad or lazy butcher can waste pounds by using joints for the wrong purposes. And every messing officer should have a working knowledge of the uses of the various cuts. Here are the principal cuts from a forequarter of beef. The shin. This is good for stewing and makes excellent brawn. The plate. This is about the same weight and can be stewed too, or minced. The brisket. This can be pickled or used for sausages. The leg of mutton cut or clod. This can be used for stewing or braising. The fore rib. This should be kept for roasting. The middle rib. A similar cut, also good for roasting. The chuck ribs. See that these are saved for roasting and braising. The sticking piece. You can use this in stews or minced. Now for the hindquarter. These are the principal cuts. The shank. This is used for steak pies and brawn. The top side. Watch this carefully. It's first class roasting or braising meat. The silver side. This is good for stewing, pickling or braising. The thick flank provides good roasting or braising meat. You can use it for stewing steak too. The rump, this is the favorite cut of most people. It provides first class roasting, braising or frying steak. The sirloin, another cut which should be kept for roasting. The kidney fat, the kidney fat contains the kidney and, as we've seen, consists of suet which should be chopped for puddings. The wing rib. Here's a dozen pounds of good roasting meat. The thin flank. A less valuable cut, good for stewing, mince or pies. But it's all good beef, if it's properly stored, properly thawed and properly cooked. I think we can take it there'll be no more trouble with the beef. Any other suggestions? Aye, sir. Could we have some porridge for breakfast sometimes? Certainly. As a matter of fact, you'll find it on the next bill of fare when we come to it. 